Hello people, today we are going to talk about Dover Beach, Matthew North. You are most welcome in this discussion. In this discussion, we will be talking about Dover Beach, its um, its introduction, about Matthew North and the place, biography. We will be talking about structure of the poem and theme of the poem, and we will analysis the poem later. With the help of uh, these notes, we can talk in depth about the poem. Hope you're gonna enjoy the poem. And finally, we will be talking about literary devices, and there will be a quiz for you. Hope you're gonna enjoy it. Let's start now. First one is "Dove Beach" by Matthew Arnold. Introduction. Let's talk about his uh, background of the poem. He wrote Dover Beach during or shortly after a visit he and his wife made to the Dover region of South Eastern England. The wife or oh, who the Dover region me gaye the South Eastern England me. Setting of the poem is in 1851, and he married his uh, wife earlier that year in 1851. The town of Dover is closer to friends than any other port city in England. जो डव जो रीजन है टाउन है वो फ्रेंड्स से काफ़ी नज़दीक है ओके द बॉडी ऑफ वाटर सेपरेटिंग द कोस्ट लाइन ऑफ द टाउन फ्रॉम द कोस्ट ऑफ फ्रेंड्स इज द स्ट्रेट ऑफ डव नॉर्थ ऑफ द इंग्लिश चैनल एंड साउथ ऑफ द नॉर्थ सी ही बिगेन हिज करियर एज अ पॉइंट Winning early recognition as a student at rugby school, so he was studying at rugby school. His father was a strict or innovative headmaster. He studied at the uh, Balliol College and Oxford Study uh, University. After marrying in 1851, Arnold began work as a government school inspector, a grueling position which nonetheless afforded him the opportunity to travel throughout England and the continent. Throughout his five thirty-five years in this position, Arnold developed an interest in education, an interest which fed into both his critical works and his poetry. Ambedkar class in on Etna and poems established Arnold's reputation. These are his uh, early poems. As a poet, he he became famous. And in 1857, he wrote, offered, has offered a position, which he accepted and held until 1867, as professor of poetry at Oxford. Arnold became the first professor to lecture in English rather than Latin. Matthew Arnold died in Liverpool in 1888, and you can remember again, T. S. Eliot was born in this year. Dove Beach is a lyric poem. Lyric means what? What does lyric mean? Subjective poetry with a rhyme scheme and meter, which reveals the poet's thoughts and feelings to create a single unique impression. He uses iambic pentameter. His rhyming scheme is A B A C D B D C E F C G F G H I H J I J K E L M E N M L O P P O A Q Q A A. So it's really tough to remember this one. You can note down. The structure of his poem is four stanzas, thirty-seven lines. First stanza consists of fourteen lines. Second stanza consists of six lines. Sestet. And third stanza consists of eight lines. It is called octet. Uh, do you remember the sonnet part? If you have not watched that video, you can uh, check out my other videos. Fourth stanza consists of nine lines. Let's talk about theme of the poem. In Arnold's world of the mid 1800s, the pillar of faith supporting society was crumbling under the weight of scientific thinkers. Such as the evolutionary theory of English physician Erasmus Darwin, 
and French naturalist Jean Baptiste Lamarck. The stance of God and Christian belief were being doubted. Arnold, who was deeply religious, lamented the dying of light of faith. As we know, कि जब भी poem poet कोई poem लिखता है, these are his expressions, these are his feelings. और usually अगर कोई faith करता है God पे और now these are crumbling. So he is feeling hurt or sometimes he want to save his faith. That's why they write. As he was also lamented, the dying of the light of faith as symbolized by the light he sees in Dow Beach on the coast of France, which gleams one moment and is gone the next. Now let's see the analysis of the poem. The sea is calm tonight, the tide is full. The moon lies fair upon the streets on the French coast. The light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of stern England stand glimmering and washed out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window, sweet is the night air, only from the long line of spray. Where the sea meets the moon blanched land, listen, you hear the grating roar of pebbles, which the waves draw back and fling. At their return up the high strand, begin and cease, and then again begin, with tremulous cadence slow, and bring the eternal note of sadness ill. Sophocles long ago heard it on the Aegean, and it brought into his mind the tubit ebb and flow of human misery. We find also in the sound a thought hearing it by this distant northern sea. The sea of faith was once to at the full and round earth's shore, lay like the fold of a bright girdle furled, but now I only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roll retreating to the breath of the night wind down the vast ages drear and naked shingles of the world. Ah, love, let us be true to one another, for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams so various, so beautiful, so new, hath Really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help or for pain, and we are here as on the darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. Let's see this again from analysis. As you can see here, the water reflects images of the moon referring to the street of uh, Dow Beach and uh, this clause here you can uh, see here okay so this clause represents a sense of rhythm on how the light blinks on and off and also emphasize on the theme of dying faith okay gleams and is gone now so faith is gone now because of scientific experiments and these faiths are proved wrong the white clips are made you can see here white clips are made out of chalk and erode easily connecting to the eroding of the faith okay means a faith dhire dhire erode ho raha hai khatam ho raha hai introduces conflict between the sea and the land between long held beliefs and the challenges against them so here यहाँ पे आप देख सकते हैं कि लैंड और सी के बीच में कॉन्टीन्यूस एक कन्फ्लिक्ट रहता है कि एक दूसरे के बीच में तो यहाँ पर हमारा क्या है चैलेंजेस हमारे जो फेथ हैं उनको भी चैलेंज किया जा रहा है मीन्स यू कैन से दैट लैंड इज फेथ एंड द सी इज द साइंटिफिक एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड नाउ द बोस आर कन्फ्लिक्ट अगेंस्ट ईच अदर रेफर्स टू एन एंशंट हु इज सोफोकलिस वी नो Okay, there is a reference to an ancient Greek play, Antigone, 
written by Sophocles in which he says that gods can bring ruin upon people from one generation to next to then next the eternal note of sadness uh, heard it on the again and it brought into mind the tubitive and flow of human misery the in the sound of the sea and poet hears a uh, thought that disturbed him just as the one heard by Sophocles. Tubid means muddy and cloudy and ab means tide movement. The sea of faith was once, okay, refers to the dying faith again as seen in the theme. And girdle means a shash, belt, anything that surrounds of encircles and shingles, pebbles, pebbled beaches. Here he says, I love let us be true addresses his wife telling they should stay faithful and uh, persevere in the faith refers to the condition of earth and how there nothing good left to guide us towards that goodness means his faith is broken now allusion to battle epipole or epipole <clears throat> Okay, here, the, this is one of the, you know, m most quoted lines from his poem. Where ignorant armies clash by night means asked in exams. Exam ke purpose se pooch raho. Bohut saar exams se me line poochi jati hai. Ki ye kis usse hai. Let me take one sip of my coffee. <laughs> okay. So, allusion to the battles of Epipole. Ye, ab ye poochha jata hai kai saar exams me ki kis cheez ko allude kya ho gaya hai yaan pe, thik hai? A walled fortress near the Syracuse on the island of Sicily. In this fight, Athens fought an army of uh, Syracusans at night, killing each other in the night. Okay, so Epipole ki jo yuddhu hua tha, battle hua tha, wo raat ko hua tha. Darkling, dark, obscure, dim and all. Occurring in darkness, menacing, threatening, dangerous, ominous. Literary devices ke baare mein baat karte hain. Assonance, you can say tired lies. Paradox and hyperbole are, using, uh, are being used here. Grating roar of pebbles. Okay, pebbles ka itna shore nahi hota vase. But grating roars of pebbles. Metaphor, the sea of faith. Comparison of faith. To, of, uh, to water making up an ocean we find simile here the sea of faith lay like the folds of a bright girdle fold use of like to compare the sea and girdle metaphor breath of the night wind comparison of the wind to a living thing simile is being used anaphora let's see the anaphora so various so beautiful so new okay repetition of so is anaphora no love, no light, no certitude, no peace. So if there is continu continuity and repetition of a word, there we are there, anaphora is applied. <clears throat> so here it is a quiz for you. You can write down on your uh, notebooks and you can check out and watch the video again and again uh, so that it can help you. What type of the poem is Dow Bridge? What is rhyme scheme of the poem? What was the overall theme? What year did Arnold marry his wife? 51. Okay, 51. What, uh, what battle does the poem allude to? What connection do the white clips have to the theme? What play does the poem allude to? Okay, so you can get answer of these all questions. And uh, give one example of alliteration in this poem. And what does Arnold mainly described it in this poem. So it's my request. Watch online. Don't uh, put them offline and then use watch. And please watch online. And uh, if you have not subscribed yet, you can subscribe. You can watch my other poetry recitations. I have made five to six poems, and I am just completing the poetry section right now. I will be completing fifteen more. Uh, poets. I hope you are enjoying the video. Bye bye. Take care. See you in next video.